we're all in this until the end. According we're to... all in this together. Yeah, so Lucasfilm, Disney, Disney Lucasfilm is trying very, very hard to unite the fandom oh, that they've God. spent the last two years attacking to get everybody to come see The Rise of Skywalker. With a new tagline, they're going to dredge up some, some old characters and... Uh, yeah, they want everybody to come see this movie. Yeah, we're all in this to the end, guys. We're all in this. All of us are in this until the end. This is, I feel a rant coming on. Yeah, this is Neon. I'm here with Geeky Sparkles, who's all fired up now because uh, this this reeks of desperation to me because this is obviously not something they planned. We're less than a month out, and uh, we're all in this until the end. So speaking of all of us being in this until the end, uh, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't. <laughs> if you haven't Ooh, subscribed. That was smooth. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe to the channel. We're at 78,000 subs, hoping for 100,000 soon, hoping that Kappa doesn't take us down. They're not going uh, to. Till the end, till Kappa comes. Yeah, I don't think they're going to. We have 0% under 13 viewers from everything I can I can gather. Uh, and if you're a kid, uh, turn this shit off. That's right. That is that is, that is is my, my word for you. So, okay, new Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker TV spot delivers a brand new tagline now i did watch this spot geeky i don't think you've seen it no. yet but uh now they've already gone out to the original trilogy fans and they beat that drum mm -hmm. and they're gonna beat it even harder we're gonna talk about uh how wicked how wicked might be getting a beaten here too um but now they're beating the prequel drum because they're playing duel of the fates oh uh, you can't even during during this trailer to try to get those prequel fans on board too so basically we're all in this to the end that already had an end that we had to bring back to make a new end and we all have to be this at the end. Where, okay, we're all in this at the end. Well, why didn't you have that sentiment uh, at the last movie when people had legitimate criticisms and they automatically, no matter what the criticism was, were immediately told they were alt-right trolls, afraid of strong females, misogynists, whatever, as we saw again in, this, in the comment section of this article we're gonna talk about shortly. Yeah. Um, the same tired load of shit. And then you had the director uh, go around block lists, calling people man babies, all that. Where was the all in there united then? Yeah, Lucasfilm was actually delighting and dividing the fandom just a few short years you ago. brought somebody in whose whole point of the movie was to subvert fan expectations. What the hell did you think was going to happen? Just out of curiosity. I think I think Disney thought the Star Wars brand was too strong that they literally could slap the Star Wars name on anything and throw it out there and fans were going to gobble it up. Right. And then, oh, gobble. Because uh, Thanksgiving was yesterday. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm just like, this is stupid. And now they're trying to unite everybody and we're all in this to the end. No, we're not. If you want everybody in this to the end, one, you would not have let Ryan Johnson anywhere near the franchise. And when, he, when you know his whole point is to subvert people's expectations, why you thought that was a good idea, I have no answer. Two, you wouldn't have bashed in the fandom immediately after the movie. Three, you wouldn't have ruined Luke Skywalker. You would have made sure that, 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 that all the, the, the audience got the original characters back together again, which is what everybody went expecting for The Force Awakens. There's so many things here you could have done if you wanted it all united to the end. And now you're pulling out every effing stop you can think of trying to you know get people to come into this movie because if it was such a vocal minority as you guys kept saying, oh, it's just a, little, a few people who don't like it. We're not worried about it. Then why the hell are you so effing freaked out now that you're bringing all these like little things out to try to bring everybody back in? And even you're banking on The Mandalorian uniting everybody. Everybody. We're going to talk about the Mandalorian and how Baby Yoda has become a pawn and all this this crap right. too. I, I can tell you exactly why they're doing it, and I'm going to talk about this uh, in another video that the box office predictions are dropping. Yeah, um, they're dropping because people, no one cares. Nobody cares. Uh, so this is coming from Collider. We're all in this till the end. So claims the uh, new TV spot for the Rise of Skywalker. Now Disney brand or not, we're not chalking this one up to parroting the similar sounding rally cry from the famous Avengers Endgame ad campaign, whatever yeah, it takes. Yeah, it does seem like it's exactly the same thing. Sure, it's a little clunkier. Is that McClunkier? Mc it's yeah. McClunkier. Not quite as memorable and just as generic, but it's also bound to be an emotional moment when each of your favorite Star Wars character dies or, or cries. No, because I don't have any favorites left. Cries it out when they all die. Because you flipping killed the ones I cared about and then the other ones I cared about, you completely made them, you know, unlikable in the last film. In addition to the new spot, we also have an impressive new poster for the film. Uh, it uses minimal artwork to maximize effect, teasing the tall task ahead of the resistance when it comes to defeating the First Order once and for all. What the hell is but the that, First Order? It doesn't sound like it's going to be the First Order they're defeating. From what we're hearing, it sounds like it's going to be they have to work with the First Order. We all have to hug it out and friend, friendship is magic to go defeat the Emperor now. 
yeah so we have to beat so here we go uh remember star destroyer did the empire start but now they oh, have lasers yeah. you're rooting for the the underdog which is star wars star wars is the underdog i never thought star wars would be the underdog uh so yeah they're trying very hard to get the fans back on board i think it does have to do with the box office predictions uh you know this this happens time and time again with with comics and with uh, animation where they boldly proclaim we're looking for a new audience uh you know screw the old audience we don't care let the past die kill it if you have to right and they killed it now they're complaining about it yeah but now, it's just a small amount of people who are mad oh shit it's a lot more than a small amount of people who are mad you know i think most people just don't care because they're like oh i'm out that last movie i'm out yeah and that that definitely i mean you know i think in retrospect in 10 or 20 years people are going to look back at the last jedi and the uh the social media debacle around it and they're gonna be like yeah that was basically the arch deluxe of marketing uh <laughs> star wars because you you failed uh, miserably you alienated your core audience and then when they didn't support you and it hurt your bottom line then you came groveling back well that's what they keep uh, doing they have the same thing with uh with captain marvel is that you let these people you know go off at the mouth and insult people and then you know th they think it's their personal platform to say whatever the hell they want yeah and then people are upset and then you're like well it's because the people they made upset are the bad people not yeah. the you know i love this they're, they're starring original trilogy actors which i named first uh yeah who's left who's left you um, know so you named the oh matt smith is in there I thought he wasn't doing this when he said I love yeah him. i'm being a sarcastic yeah anyway you know i have to clarify that because some people can't tell um <laughs> yeah, i know right we get a lot of people that can't tell what what's sarcasm and what's not um so you know i just i just too little too late if you really wanted to unite the fandom and you wanted to say united there's a lot of choices you could have made that could have done that and you you every time you had the opportunity every time you were at the crossroad you'd pick the side of how do i piss them off more and that's the problem and they did it with such glee too. Yeah. It was like they gleefully. We don't need you. We want the new audience anyway. We want the audience that's on the right side of history, not you. Because if you don't like it, you're clearly a, a misogynist troll who's racist bot. and homophobic. And, yeah, a Russian, Russian bot. bot. I mean, I, I just can't, I've never seen, well, no, I have seen this before in comics, but I've never seen uh, this much like vitriol thrown in a fandom. I mean, people, people, have issues with uh, you know certain properties or whatever but the lucasfilm disney lucasfilm you know they went out of their way to basically tell the customers to go fuck themselves i mean time and time again now now only at the end do they understand they're they're crawling back yeah uh, they're crawling back they're supposed to do a sneak peek of rise of the resistance and rise of skywalker and i forgot to watch it because well we had stuff going on who it's cares a long story who cares it was who cares uh so it's star war the rise of who cares but they have a new uh clip out and they they ha it's it kicks you in the feels they're showing a montage of all the better moments in star wars and then they show work davis uh putting on what appears to be an older wicket costume mm -hmm. so yeah there's talk that the uh the death star pieces are on endor could it be that wicket is in the movie well that makes sense because then they brought the, the, the toys out and stuff and they had the big star wars toy drop uh one of the things i heard, i grabbed was a plush wicket yeah that makes total sense i mean what what you know it's like they're going back like who's left who haven't we killed yet we haven't killed lando we haven't killed wicket you know we can go let's just find all the characters i mean granted we could put wicket lando chewie and the droids on the falcon and blow it up or the falcon could get shot down wicket could be riding a space horse on the star destroyer mm -hmm. and the falcon could land on wicket blow him up and then his daughter will take over i don't know ways to kill wicket. yeah his daughter will take over. his daughter right. will take over because we can't have you know wicket be in charge of the ewoks um there's his daughter right there there she is <laughs> yeah, that's where I'm saying. joking, but I don't know if Yeah, so they're gonna bring it looks like they're gonna bring Wicket back too. So they're they're pulling out all the stops, but again, guys, it's, it's like too little too late. You had plenty of opportunities over the last two years. Last two years to mend some fences, Lucasfilm and Disney, and you didn't do it. Instead you wait until three weeks out from the premiere of The Rise of Skywalker uh to get on your knees. But and, you know be and beg and beg. I was gonna say yeah. beg. I wasn't but gonna You know what else is funny? They didn't seem to backpedal too much until Galaxy's Edge didn't do well. Right. They thought they had it. They honestly thought, and that's why I think J.J. Abrams brought up the Phantom Menace, they honestly thought that these complainers mm -hmm. were, were a just... a vocal minority. Were a minority. They did not realize... It's like, look, guys, Solo, you know, like nobody went to go see it. Galaxy's Edge. Again, it's not just 
the fandom menace, but it just shows the general public. The general public doesn't even give a shit okay, about Star Wars. Speaking of general public, um, I was on, I'm on different message boards for Disney, obviously, because we do the Dis Disney blog with piratesandprincesses.net. And I was out on blogs, and it's funny to me because people were commenting on Galaxy's Edge, and they said basically it's just a, a, a ride in a shopping mall. That's what these people are just general yeah. people who aren't super uber fans, talking about how they don't like Galaxy's Edge that much. They're hoping Rise of Resistance is a lot better because right now it is literally one ride in a shopping mall, and it's 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 not that great. And these are general people, not uber fans, not people who don't like Disney or whatever. These are just people who love Disney. They're like it's dumb. One of the biggest Disney podcasts out there, and I, I mentioned it in an article, uh, it's the Disney Dish with uh, Len Testa mm -hmm. and Jim Hill. And these guys are like Disney super fans. Right, yeah. You need to go listen to that sometime. Yeah, and I'll, I may have put a link to that. But they talked about they went to Galaxy's Edge uh, for the first time, and Jim Hill was thoroughly unimpressed. He's like, compare this to what they're doing in Universal, where people are planning trips around, like what kind of butterbeer they're going to get. Mm -hmm. And then you look at Galaxy's Edge, and they're like, the freaking blue milk is like latex. Um, but they're probably pulling it, aren't they? Th he said that he thinks they will because he said the guests just aren't. It's like a one and done. Like you try it once, okay, that's it. I'm not buying. I'm not paying seven bucks for another glass of this this crap, you know. Um, and uh, Jim Hill's like, yeah, just I'll pay you seven bucks. Just give me a shot of rum and let's let's be done with it. But uh, they said that they'll probably pull it because it's nowhere near. They thought it was going to be their butter beer and it's nowhere near. They thought that Galaxy's Edge was going to be their uh, Wizarding World and it's nowhere near the immersion or no. anything. Uh, that, that Universal's doing, and then Nintendo's coming too. Right, and so, here's the thing: like these people, like you know, other people are like, "Oh, you're negative. You're so negative. And you hate Disney." Again, these people are like us, where they love Disney, they do podcasts on it. It's important to them, but they call out stuff they don't think is right either. And because there's a difference between criticism and negativity, and I'm so effing tired of people confusing the two. So let's let's talk about that. Uh, let's talk about that. Um, oh, God, yeah. The one thing that could unify the Star Wars fandom and the blogs, and again, I'm going get, to get back to this, the, the access media, the, the people that have been defending Disney, defending Disney Star Wars for the last couple of years, who really, I think, poured kerosene on the fire, these blogs can't even uh, celebrate the fact that, you know, the Mandalorian seems to be bringing the haters back. Uh, oh, you the know, haters, you mean quote unquote? The haters, the quote unquote haters. That people seem to be unified in, in liking the Mandalorian. Well, not everybody likes the Mandalorian, but there seems to be a lot more people who like the Mandalorian than the other movies. Right, but we've got the bloggers uh, and we've got Twitter. You know, we've got Twitter out there being like, oh, there are not enough women in the Mandalorian. We've got uh, the blog now. Uh, bloggers, uh, comic book resources, one of the biggest offenders. And I, I want to point, point out something. I actually commented this article yesterday when there was only 18 comments, calling out one person in particular who kept going on about the typical what you expect because you're all this racist man baby, blah, 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 blah. I, I, I made a response to it and I was, you know, fair about it. And uh, my response disappeared. Like, it was there because I went back and edited it and added something to the end and I went back to look and see if I commented. It's gone. Now, is it possible I deleted it accidentally? I guess, but I don't see how, but my comment was deleted. Um, no, I think they know exactly who you are. I think they took it down. I think it's because we've we've called out comic book resources before for trying very hard to split the fandom. You know? Well, they didn't get better with this because don't you know, Baby Yoda's a Mary Sue too. And it's hypocrisy because if you, because you know, everybody says Ray's a Mary Sue, but she's not. And Baby Yoda is too that. And it's like, okay, well, there's a few things here. One, we don't know where Baby Yoda's been for 50 years. 50 years. That's 50 years. We don't know where he's been, what he's trained with, what has been done. We don't know. Could he try to be Mary Sue? Sure. Do we know that yet? No. It's it, too early to say. It's possible Baby Yoda spent 50 years on a planet full of Yodas, and they all know how to use the Force as well as Yoda. Yeah, it's possible. You know? We don't know. We don't know what the backstory is. Like with Rey, you knew her backstory was. She's literally been on this planet her whole life, never left, had no reason to be good at all this stuff, and suddenly was. We don't know the backstory with Baby Yoda yet. I mean, it could turn out that he's going to marry Sue, but as of now, it's not. Also, Baby Yoda uses the Force literally for a few seconds, and it knocks him on his ass for, like, apparently days. He's yeah. unconscious. So, a clear, you know, he wasn't like he suddenly could use it and be the bestest at it ever. He, he used it for a few seconds, and it knocked him out. Yeah, so, yeah, and it just seems almost like an innate ability that, that this species has. Right, you know? but it's, I'm, I'm okay with innate abilities, but, they, but there still was a consequence for using it. It wasn't like, I suddenly know how to use it. I'm going to get us out of here for no reason whatsoever other than that I'm the chosen one. So let's let's talk about, uh, you know, comic book resources again, using something that's uh, getting a lot of buzz now to attack They're just Star doing Wars it fans. to get the buzz because they need, they need, they need hits. They need hits. Um, 
Baby Yoda and his precious Force antics on The Mandalorian have not fallen on the same level of scrutiny exposes further hypocrisy. What Force antics? Hypocrisy. Literally force uses antics. it one time. One time to slow down a rhino. That's what he does. And, uh, um, you know, before anyone takes comment section with pitchforks and torches. Too like, late. Like Geeky, who had her comment. It actually uh, wasn't gone. that bad. I it just wasn't. I just called out that as a woman. I think she's Mary Sue, and I'm really tired of hearing the same tired argument. It's almost like, yo, mama, oh, I don't like the, this movie. Before hearing my reasons why, well, you're just a racist, misogynist, homophobic, whatever insult I can think of throw at you, because clearly there's something wrong with you, because you don't like a movie. So this basically goes on to say that Baby Yoda and Rey are in the same situations, but because Baby Yoda is a Yoda and a he... And a baby that we don't know where he's been for 50 years and what training he's had or what training he hasn't had. We know nothing about Yoda. We, we have don't. nothing. And it's not even, I mean, everybody calls it Yoda. We, it's a, the child, technically. It's, it's, they're just called Baby Yoda because they don't know what species it, it is to call it that. So. Yeah. So. I do, but that's everybody calls it Baby Yoda. So we talk about all the Mary Sue's. But again, you know, uh, this is apples and oranges. Apples and oranges because we're comparing Ray not to Baby Yoda. Okay, because we don't know the deal with Baby Yoda, but we're comparing Rey to Luke and Anakin. And even Anakin, who was supposed to be one of the most powerful Jedi that ever lived, still had years of training before he did any major force moves. Uh, when he was a child, you saw the extent of his abilities where he could pod race well. It wasn't well. It wasn't, yeah, it wasn't like he could actually control anything. He had good reflexes and uh, he could guess what uh, Mace Windu was holding. And I am so effing tired of hearing this about Luke shooting out the Death Star. Okay, a couple things here. One, they made sure they prefaced it by saying that he was shooting Womp Rats back home. So this is like something he's, he's practiced something similar to it a million times. Two, he would have got his ass blasted if Han Solo hadn't hit Vader out of the sky right behind him. He was so great in the force, he didn't even know Vader, he, was, he couldn't stop Vader from his shooting his ass off. Han had to do it, or he wouldn't have been able to destroy it anyway. And how much of a Mary Sue is Darth Vader to get shot by Han in the first place? Right. I so mean, I'm just on. like, you know, you but know? but meanwhile, suddenly Ray can just, you know, completely mind control people and deflect mind control from Kylo Ren, block him, you know, could completely do all that, can use a pick up a lightsaber and defeat him in battle when she's never picked up a lightsaber before ever. Yeah, Jedi, even Anakin had no lightsaber in the Phantom Menace. He had to train with Obi-Wan for 10 years until he could use it. And he wasn't that good with it because he got his arm chopped off by Count Dooku. I'm just tired of them saying this when it's not true. And the thing is, you know, the reason, and, and I think they could have got away with Rey if they had done better writing and they had made her have some challenges. It seems like every challenge that comes her way isn't really a challenge at all. Yeah, so they're, now they're calling Baby Yoda MacGuffin who spent an, an undetermined amount of time being hunted by the remnants of the Empire, which is true. I mean, look, Baby Yoda is, is the plot device. Right, you know, I in agree, the series, but we but don't know what happened. We don't happened. know. So anyway, um, what's funny, though, and this is why I think they attack, uh, you know, or they bait Star Wars fans, these blogs. You know, the average YouTuber who talks about Star Wars, good or bad, gets hundreds if not thousands of comments um this article which has been shared all over the place has 33 comments. well they might be blocking them or deleting them well, that's because true i i unless i you know i i somehow managed to delete it when i was hitting edit which i don't think i did my comment was deleted and it was there yeah this this is true though you can't compare luke destroying star, death star to anything ray's doing because you're ignoring an important quote i used to bullseye womp rats my t16 back home which suggests luke had yeah, practice hitting small exactly. targets and moving vehicles before um, oh, yeah. go to the comments. There's one chick in particular that everything, uh, you know, that that everything everybody says is just, you know, there's there's a guy too that they're just like everybody is just, you know, you're just man babies, you know, go back to your cave type people, and it's like really that's who I responded to, but it's gone. Oh God, this is just yeah. They, it's so weird because you're I read your comment. It wasn't that inflammatory. It wasn't. But again, this just this just points out that like even. Even when, you know, you've got a good thing, Lucasfilm Disney tends to ruin it. They're getting a lot of fans back on board with The Mandalorian, and they're letting these bloggers go out there and, and shit on fans again. You know, we've got J.J. Abrams weighing in on... Oh, yeah, now he is saying... Like, now he's weighing we, in on they're, they're trying to bring it in. They're trying to use Baby Yoda to leverage the new movie. That's exactly what this is. And that's that's where I was going with this. Thank you. They, they were like, yeah, Baby Yoda... Uh, everybody likes Baby Yoda, so let's leverage Baby Yoda. Everybody likes Wicket. Let's bring well, Wicket. Most people don't like Ewoks, but I do. Let's bring Wicket back. Uh, you can't hate. You can't. A lot of people like the Mark Emperor. Davis. So let's bring the Emperor back. Yeah. You know, remember, 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 remember Yoda. Remember the Emperor. Remember. Yeah. That's what's going on here. Um, 
so for me, Star Wars is uh, uh, sort of constantly expanding and sort of ever expanding. And the, the ability to choose a character like Yoda and say, what if we created a baby Yoda? Well, it wouldn't surprise me if that was in the marketing meeting because well, that's what they do. They sit there and be like, what can we, what, what character can we, you know, make something cute of and make a lot of money from? And we see them do it. With, I mean, and they do it clear back to the original trilogy to be fair, but you know. Yeah, but this is so weird. Like J.J. Abrams now, he's all like, look how nostalgic I am too. I'm a fan like you. Just like you, but I understand there's nuance and you don't. It's not just nostalgia, but it's taking something that's meaningful, a story that has deep roots and potency and resonates with a human heart, a beating it's heart. What's going on that? Uh, these are the kind of things that when they hit and there's something that feels like oomph, it's not just cute, but implies a story. It sparks imagination. There is no more imagination anymore. Hollywood's no. destroyed imagination. No. We'll, we'll talk about that in another video, too, because yeah. we're, we're watching the, the Toys That Made Us, and they talked about why... Oh, I, I, that was great when the guy went off about how they just keep repurposing everything and there's no imagination or creativity anymore. I was like, that's yeah. right. Former, yes. Former Hasbro executive talked about how you're never going to see the 80s again because that was pretty much it. Well, like, no, you're going to see the 80s. This is going to be their bad version of the 80s. Yeah, but I mean, you're never going to see the kind of creativity right. that sparked uh, all of these things because it doesn't exist anymore. You know, everybody's going back to the same well. So, I mean, look, I like Baby Yoda. I, think I do love Baby Yoda. He's so cute. Uh, but, you know, again, even when even when Disney Lucasfilm has something, uh, you know, it just seems like it just seems like it gets it gets tainted, ruined, turned into some political thing. Mm -hmm. You know, and baby, even if they don't do it. The blogs do. Yeah. Baby Yoda is being used as, as a hockey puck basically right now with the fans and you had you know twitter going on about how there aren't enough women in the mandalorian even though all the promo art shows a, a, a female bounty hunter it's going to show up at some point yeah it's another reason why you episodic know. probably wasn't the way to go yeah, i understand yeah. why but back to the back to the what we started this on is this whole um but the, right now they're trying to sell tickets for this and they must be panicked it's not hitting the numbers they think they keep dropping the, the expectation but now we're all in this till the end no People are not in this to the end. They might have been in this to the end, but you turned around, pissed everybody off, insulted fans, said that their opinions didn't matter, even if they had valid criticisms that had nothing to do with female leads. They got told they were misogynists. Whether they were male or female, they got called misogynists. How I got called weird names in, in Spanish because I didn't like I the Star Wars film. Insulting uh, female words because I didn't like the, the last Star Wars film. You divide this up. You let the media run at the mouth and cause more division even further. And now you're like, oh, no, no. We're all in this together to the end. Well, you should have thought of that uh, back at The Force Awakens. Yep. You should have planned with The Force Awakens. And you should never let Ryan Johnson anywhere near your film. Because no. and, and you know what? It went from, well, no, no, he was just trying to make a Star Wars film had nothing to do with subverting expectations. Even J.J. Abrams talked about, oh, I really liked how he subverted all our expectations. So that's exactly what he's setting out to do. And you tried to argue that, no, no, that's not what he was trying to do. Like, shit, it wasn't. They all admit it now. Yeah. Yeah. It just didn't go the way you thought it was going to go. Mm -mm. And it's, it's costing you gobs and gobs of money, guys. And I think it's going to cost them gobs of money with uh, The Rise of Skywalker from everything I've seen. That's a totally different video talking about the, uh, the declining box office predictions. Mm -hmm. For this movie so uh too little too late i think so is i think the 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 point of this is too little uh too late you should have thought of this not wait till three weeks from the new movie that's right to, to try to kiss some butt so all right so we're gonna wrap this one up sure okay so please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants here on clownfish tv we'll talk to you guys later bye hey guys thanks for watching clownfish tv please consider supporting the channel go to clownfishsupport.com that's clownfishsupport.com and if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.